At Wageningen Center for Development Innovation, we have been working with many multi-stakeholder partnerships in many sectors, in different cultural settings and at different scales. While every context is different, there is a surprising similarity in what makes MSPs generally effective. In our MSP guide, we describe what these generic principles are and provide tools for applying them. To start, it is good to realize in an MSP you do certain steps in a particular order and ask yourself the right questions at each step. Only then will you be able to design an MSP that is fit for purpose. For example, you need to engage the right partners strategically and agree on what you are going to do. Or you might find out that MSPs are not the best way to achieve your goal, which can be a legitimate conclusion. But if you decide to go for an MSP, there are some design choices that will need to be made. We use a simple process model to help you ask these questions. It starts with an initiating phase, in which someone gets the idea to start an MSP and must clarify why this is a good idea. From there on, the adaptive planning phase is about defining in detail what issues and opportunities will be focused on, based on an agreed theory of change. The challenge here is to get everybody's contribution. The collaborative action phase is then where things really start happening. Here your focus is on making sure that the collaboration is happening. Finally, there is a reflective monitoring phase where you continually try to make sense of what's happening and what is being achieved. This can be about metrics, but it's perhaps even more about sense making and learning. So, what makes MSPs healthy and effective? There are seven principles that such MSPs generally follow. Let's start with number one. Just like nature is a complex adaptive system, human systems are also complex. Which means that change is dynamic and unpredictable. In MSPs, we have to accept uncertainty and be agile enough to respond to emerging opportunities and to do experiments to get feedback from the system that we are trying to influence. That is something that many organizations still don't practice. It's called adaptive management. Involving a large diversity of stakeholders is actually an asset here because it generates more chances to understand the system and create new solutions. When we talk about social, economic or political change, we are also talking about changing the underlying institutions or traditions. With institutions we mean the rules of the game, the formal and informal norms and values that shape how people think and behave. These can be barriers to change that need to be overcome, but they can also be supportive and help MSPs achieve their aims. Power differences that stand in the way of desired change need to be addressed in an MSP as well. This means two things. Reaching out to powerful stakeholders to apply their power for the right cause, but also helping less powerful stakeholders to get into a position where they can use power constructively. It takes real effort to create MSPs that are safe spaces, affecting real change. Conflict arises when parties or individuals have different interests and struggle unproductively over them, rather than consulting or negotiating solutions. Conflict is an inevitable part of any MSP. And most successful cases that we know about tell a story of working through conflict before the real synergies started to happen. In effective MSPs, this is essential to understand the conflict, bring it to the surface and deal with the conflict. Underlying any effective MSP is the capacity and willingness to communicate in an open, respectful, honest, empathetic and critical way. This involves abilities to both listen to others and to clearly articulate your own perspectives and ideas. Process designers can ensure that space is created for exploring the worldviews that underlie stakeholders' positions, and also keep an eye on and acknowledge the emotions of the people involved. These are necessary to move beyond merely debate and have a true dialogue. Effective communication also means using decision-making mechanisms which deliver high-quality decisions and that are practically enforceable. Leadership patterns and capacities have a profound influence on the direction that MSPs take. MSPs need a strong collaborative leadership pattern, as they are about enabling people to work together and sharing responsibility 
and becoming empowered to tackle difficult issues. Leadership roles then need to be vested in a range of actors. Sometimes this means that you deliberately delegate your own leadership and stimulate others to take up a leadership role for the purpose of the greater good. MSPs have to provide a space where learning can flourish, otherwise they are pointless. MSPs need mechanisms that enable sta different stakeholders to learn together from their collective experience. This means that you need events and activities throughout the life cycle of an MSP to bring stakeholders together to talk, share, analyze, make decisions and reflect on what they're doing together. The quality of these learning events can be the difference between a successful or a failed MSP. The MSP guide offers over 60 tools and frameworks to help you put these principles into practice and make the most of your stakeholder engagement.